Good day there folks and welcome back to the YouTube channel. This week we're going to be 3D modelling and sketching out some of the ideas I had for a uh, homemade scratch built badger brass style lantern. Now I found this very nice looking sugar holder at a local op shop and immediately the first thing I saw when I thought of it this flared bit at the start I was like that just looks like the front opening to some of those old handheld lanterns with the big lenses in them. Now, if you've come from TikTok, if you've seen my videos over there, I hope you have, they're, they're quite entertaining. Um, we, we walk through the process of some of the bits that I have access to and some of the shapes that I might be trying to put together to make this thing. Now, I don't have access to an infinite amount of funds. Well, this is crazy. And so I don't really want to risk uh, ruining and, and, and destroying a, a nice antique piece uh, trying to build something uh, when I'm not really sure what I'm doing and I'm not really sure what shapes I want to go for. So uh, the best idea that I could think of was to try and get a little bit better at 3D modelling by modelling something that actually exists by trying to match that up. And then also to actually create some of the extra elements, show how things would fit together, show what some of the looks would be like. So, at this start section, I'm just trying to model the bits of the the, the sugar holder, the sugar, the, the main body of this lantern that we're going to be building. Um, modeling them out so that I've got a an understanding of the space that I'm going to have to fit everything in. A lot of this, uh, especially when it's a very geometric shape like this, comes down to just basic uh, extrusion modeling, pulling little bits in and out, uh, changing the size and the shape of faces, adding inlets, adding extra bevels and stuff to bring in some interesting angles, angles and shapes. So uh, I think you can see that we've got a pretty reasonable looking central piece there. This is adding the cut. I'm not sure what you'd call it. It's the hole where the spoon goes in your sugar tin. So I was thinking that if I build, as in the original Badger Brass, the battery casing for this would be an LED lamp, uh, the battery casing for that into the space where the kerosene holder would have originally been, that could be a, a cool place for maybe like a cord or something. So we've been doing Boolean operations there. It's basically you create a shape and you create another shape and you look at the interaction between the two parts of the geometry there, you cut one away from the other. And so if you look at the, the, the little picture that we've got down there of the original, the sugar container, you see that there's an interesting sort of pattern on the sides. And I just wanted to emulate a little bit of that in the design by changing the cutter that we use for the, for the spoon hole to more readily match that design. So I've got that, dragging it out just to make sure that it's going to fill the space up there, uh, reach the right points. Now, I could try and use an array modifier, but if I just set the origin of this to the, to the central point, it'll rotate completely around. And if we offset it by 45 degrees and then press Shift R while duplicating it, it'll immediately do the job. And that's something that I, I didn't know how to do on the the torch blender video that we did a while back so i'm slowly learning different processes and having to go through and play the uh, manual uh, boolean edition on every single one of these it's a slow process kind of janky sometimes doing booleans it messes up with the geometry a lot and if this was going to be used in something like a video game this would be very much unideal but i feel that it's especially for my purposes in terms of visualizing and at some point getting back into 3D printing once I fix my printer, there'll be that level of good enough. <laughs> now, this is a brass lens collet that I uh, actually also found at a local op shop. It appears to be some kind of potentially stove and or gas lamp accessory part. It came in with a, a group of kerosene lanterns that they had, but didn't match any of the actual parts of those other lanterns. And just had this really neat sort of uh, design, this, this opening up the top. Um, at some point I'm going to 
try and add the little holes in the side to represent that. But I really like the idea of blending. They're three of my favourite textures when it comes to working with materials is uh, silver, uh, any kind of silver, especially stuff that is more sort of tarnished, whether that be something like pewter or or just uh, electro-plated nickel silver um, on those old sort of things that you find. Really, really, really lovely textures and colours. I think you blend silver and brass and glass. Oh boy, you got shapes and colours there, and we really like it. I like computers taking off as, I'm, as I record this audio, that's fine. Here I am trying to add those uh, divots into the side there. They're vents in the actual brass collet piece. They've got like four or five layers of a very, very, very fine mesh. I don't know. I think they look very, very pretty. So we're just going to keep going through and modeling these parts out. Now, as I said, I hope that uh, you guys have been uh, taking a look at the TikTok because uh, I've been posting daily videos over there, uh, just showing, showcasing some of the, the objects and items that I've come across in my uh, in my travels and also talking about things like uh, we do a patent corner over there in which I discuss old patents I take a look at inspirations and uh, precursors to modern technology and really try and uh, draw a bit of a parallel between where we were and, and, and where we are now a lot of times over there I might come across something that I want to work with, that I want to play with as an as a interesting idea. As I find an interesting object that I would like to make something with and showcase and talk about its history and find a way to convert something that is no longer being used, that was maybe uh, discarded by somebody and really turning it into something that, you know, could be cherished, that could be loved again. And when that comes to the the types of things that I'm creating, oftentimes I'll come across something, I'll know that I like the shapes, I'll like the textures, I'll like the, the style, but I might not know how to turn it into something yet. So the TikTok over there is really good and, and something that I really want to pick up on engagement with so that folks can say, yeah, hey, look, you know, uh, that's an interesting piece you've got there. Here's something that you could do with it. So if that's up your alley, go and check me out over there. It's under Reorden James Carey as well. Now here, I realise that the the actual body of the of the sugar tin would be a really not super feasible or functional design just on its own. So the idea of adding maybe a, a ring or a collet maybe that's adjustable that could have some really really nice components to it would add a nice visual difference to the to the thing that we've got. And so extruding these extra little bits, trying to make a uh, maybe a mounting point, maybe somewhere I could put a, a ring or something at the top. This is the point where I really wanted to try and find something creative to do, to find something uh, interesting and, and, and different. And one of the biggest things that I love about those old Badger Brass style lamps, I'm not sure if there's a proper name for them. Every time I've looked them up, that's the only one that seems to really match the description of that silver lamp with the lens in the front and two little cut glass usually gems on either side, one red and one green. Now I'm assuming that in certain situations these were used in the same sort of way as you'd have a uh, you know a turn signal or the the boat having different lights on either side to, to show which part of the boat you're facing so which way it should be going and I've probably got the order on these wrong and that's perfectly fine but it's a really really fun it's a really fun little design element. Like, often we have, especially with nowadays, very efficient torches and lanterns and stuff that direct all the light in one direction, and it's all bright white light, uh, cool white, and it has, I feel, a certain lack of character. I know that it is absolutely more efficient, but boy howdy is a little bit of a warm glow nice sometimes especially when you're trying to play around with uh, shapes, colours, designs. But the best thing about these little badger lamps is these little cut glass gems in the side, they take the light that is already being cast and direct out the front, so we're already getting a good good lantern out of it, but they shine it out the sides as well, and they add this little pop of colour that as you're carrying the lantern around, it's just, oh, it's nice. Oh, it's really, really nice. And so I wanted to add an homage to that here uh, by making this little, little collar around. So... We're going to go in and start adding in some textures. Uh, the EV renderer in 
Blender doesn't do very good with glass. You know, it kind of gives it this very, this beautiful look that looks like it's doing the index of refraction and, and distortion and all that, but it's just not, um, isn't actually doing that effect. So adding in all these other shapes here, we're going to go with the jewelry shader there. I'm going to add some extra noise and stuff to this later, just so it's nicer. Making a duplicate of this material, changing it to silver. So we can already get a little bit of a vibe for what's going on here. Changing the saturation. We really don't want that heavy, heavy gold. We want it to be a more brassy color. Um, and I feel like adding in the textures really brings things together. Like I could see the shapes, I could get them down, but really adding in these really helps. So uh, we're adding in a little uh, cylinder and you'll notice on the on the actual sugar pot that the there's that really really nice sort of baroqueish uh, cut pattern in the side which casts just a beautiful array of light now what i'm doing here is i'm creating a shader which is a mix between the uh, metal jewelry shader uh, which is what we've used for the uh, just the base metal texture and a a transparent shader so hopefully and we can already see it kind of working there although all the uvs are stretched and it's all crazy but um what that's going to do is it's a it's a method of taking the design that we've got and getting in all those really nice details without having to sit there and painstakingly model them all out because this is a previs kind of <laughs> thing it's absolutely not meant to be a final 3D print or anything like that. It's just meant to show what this is going to look like. So I'm having a bit of a struggle here trying to work with the UVs, but realized that if I put the outside back on, well, I can see where the spaces are. I'm no expert when it comes to UV editing, but it's something that I've found is pretty easy. If you want something to fit into a certain space, you can go and cut those UVs out, just select them through the space that you're looking, and then move them around. I follow the uh, Ian Hubert method of of texturing, which is uh, you find a, an image that kind of looks like the thing you want to make and you just move stuff around until it works, as opposed to trying to sit there and build things entirely from scratch. Again, I'd like to get to that point someday. That sounds wonderful. But I, well, this is where we're at. And I think it's good enough, because again, it, we're, all we're trying to do here is create that vibe of the cut. And we can already see that that looks pretty all right we're gonna adjust the color ramp there just to get slightly crisper edges and then i'll go and i'll edit the texture here trying it in the blender sort of painting window using my drawing tablet realizing that this isn't really going to be a very fun thing really not happy with the way that those brushes are working at all but you can see anyway on on, on, on the texture that as i draw that's being added into there and those white things would become oh no i did actually manage to do this completely in well, bloody da. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know for the making the the normals, uh, the normal maps, just to try and get a little bit of depth in there, I did go into a separate art program. But um, yeah, well, drawing just extra little details in here to really fill out that space. Again, not perfectly accurate to the lamp itself, but I just I just wanted a little more extra space. Making sure that none of these pieces touch or have any uh, openings that would not allow them to work because, you know, you don't want any floating islands of, of metal, because I feel like that would ruin the illusion. So we get all that, and we take a look. We've got some weird stretching UVs again, but that's a bit more open. That's a bit more like the, the proportion of a metal to opening that we see in the actual uh, real-life example. So a lot of the rest of this is just going to be playing around with the... Uh, texturing and stuff. So let's uh, let's talk a bit about what's been going on here. So one of the main reasons that I like doing this sort of stuff and taking real world things, thinking of what I could turn them into, uh, sometimes going through and doing this sort of modeling and, and creating different designs is something that I used to enjoy a lot uh, when I was younger. I used to walk around and look at things and be able to go, ah, oh, I, I can see that was welded there, or I could see that that was screwed there, and all those bits of wood must have been planed down first before they were put together. Like, I was really, really interested in how things were all put together, and I love that. Like, it was a really, really, really uh, foundational part of my youth, taking a look at how things were made, how they were put together, and then when I sort of started to grow and, and, and finding that I was interested in, in storytelling, I was interested in design and art and 
and all of those aspects and fantasy especially fantasy and steampunk uh, and everything in that sort of genre had always been really really interesting to me and when I realized that obviously and for very obviously reasons uh, a lot of um, fantasy and stuff it's absolutely focused on characters and the things that characters are dealing with in the world but when it comes to world building when it comes to creating the world that these people live in you know the magic is really strong and the the creatures and the, the other designs are really strong but there doesn't seem to be a lot of thought perhaps and and and, and again like you know this is a this is a personal view on this but there doesn't usually seem to be a lot of thought into the types of implements that folks would have to use in their day-to-day -day life and that's not interesting for a lot of people but for me what i took from that is i'm interested i'm severely um <laughs> hyper fixated on if a, a wizard has the ability to to create light as a light source do they have the power over controlling its direction or would it be better to create a housing for that magically sourced light to direct it in a in, in a more accurate way um and a lot of these things for me they they come down to that desire to know to be like what would i or someone else do in this situation how would i make this thing more functional given these this fantastic magic or or other things so when I realised that not a lot of folks were really on board with the... Folks aren't necessarily hugely big on fantasy product design in, 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 in their written literature. You know, there might be a fun segment about, you know, uh, star projecting telescopes or something like that, that that adds a sense of whimsy to the world. But when it comes down to hard tax, no one's really sitting there and going, cool, I want to know exactly what a mail order catalogue from Middle Earth would look like. Which, again, is okay, but what I realise is I kind of do. And <laughs> I feel like if those are things that I'm interested in and and if that's not something that generally comes across in writing well why couldn't I take that in the other direction is we take aspects of our own world and then we shift them and meld them and we blend them together into our worlds our world building that we create for our fantasy stories so in the reverse if we know what exists in our world we know what exists in this fantasy world and we go, well, I really want to know how they're using their, their technology, their products. Well, we can bring those into our world then. Actually take a look at how things are being made and created. And try and create emulations of those fantastical devices. So, uh, in this case, again, we've got this, what is still functionally a very, uh, maybe not necessarily conventional, but loosely based around a historic design a lamp but right now i'm modeling up the crystal because i want to encase the led that lights the lamp inside the bottom of the quartz crystal i'm a huge fan of quartz not for its uh, magical properties but because it's abundant it's super available it's got a really nice uh luster and ability to cast light it's cheap but it's still quite beautiful and i like the idea of incorporating those natural elements into uh, into a design so you make a little you add a little crystal in there and you light the crystal itself in a very high powered led and the imperfections in the quartz which is great i'm a huge fan of those sort of chunky striations cracks fractures all those imperfections they then cast the light and that light is what is then focused and sent forward by the front lens so again you're not going to get a perfectly aligned collimated brilliant uniform beam but it's the texture and the and, and the knowledge that it's light passing through a crystal passing through a lens going forwards that warm light maybe flickering slightly pulsing with vast and strange magics that's the interest to me and so from that point i would say that as a world building project this is kind of what that is it's creating it's having the world it's having topsoil is currently the 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 fantasy world that i have been writing about and a lot of the focus in that is on uh as i've said in previous videos arcanographers people who create magical technology but there's this real beauty there's this real serenity to that process and then we can see that sort of a loose look of that shining through there's a real serenity to that process a real beauty to how things come together in those ways and so i realized you know i, I could spend pages pages and pages and pages writing about 
how those things come together in the books. But I'm interested in them from that from that actual making standpoint. I want to know how things are made. I want to know how to make things. You can see some of the really, really nice light here glinting through those um, little gems on the side, glinting through the main part, shining on the walls. Um, we'll do some proper renders coming in at the end there. So uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, sorry that this wasn't a full... Uh, project video this week but I think we got somewhere I think we had a quite pretty result there at the end so uh, if you haven't already subscribe to the channel like the video and we'll see you in the next one thank you very much folks bye bye now